we are about to get into some questions. So she just asked me how old I am. We've been friends for like 25 years now. She doesn't know. <laughs> I'm right. Uh, she is right. But I just said, I'm gonna be 47 next year. And that means that I am three years away from 50. Is that insane? That's correct math. I'm good, I'm good at math, yeah. <laughs> My son helped me with that one. All right, Victoria, yesterday. Any questions? Posted on Instagram and said, we're gonna be filming today. It's been 10 years since we've been together filming. You're so dramatic. I know I am. I'm like adding 20 years to everything. We just finished our, an amazing leg day. All right, you go first. Oh, this is actually a really good one that actually just came in this morning. It's actually a video request, and I'm gonna say yes to this. I'm curious. Would be awesome to see a full day of eating comparing you both. Oh, so then what we should do is hang out all day and eat all five meals together. So As she, you eat your bitch ass meal, and I eat my huge meal. <laughs> and I'm like this. <laughs> and she's He's like, I'm hungry. <laughs> that's a good idea. Screenshot that so that we can do that. So that's not really a question. Not uh, a question. Uh, they were asking us if we would do it. It's a request, but comment below if you guys want to see that because that would be an awesome video comparing. And comment below and leave more and we're, and we're actually both not in a dieting phase right now. So yeah. we're both increasing calories. Yeah. So comparing side by side. Oh, wait, I go. What favorite exercise? I don't know because I have so many favorites. I would probably say now just because of where I'm at. And I just posted yesterday in my story about how this is the strongest and best I've ever felt. Only for sheer ego purposes, the hack squat, because I want to see how how much weight I could use on there. Okay. Just for that reason. I would say mine is Bulgarian. Ugh. I know. Who likes Bulgarians? You're like the only person. I but know. I actually did like doing them today because we did them today as a superset. My, I would say I'll give you my top three. Okay. Bulgarians, front foot elevated, reverse lunge, RDLs. RDLs are now my second favorite just because of how heavy I'm able to go. And then I really miss doing cycle goblet squats. Fuck those. Uh, see, I like them just because of how massively pumped my quads get from them. Fuck those. Okay, you go. Question. Thoughts on barbell versus Smith machine squat preference. What's your preference? Smith machine squats. Smith machine squats. Just because I feel like my back comes too much in the play with the barbell and the Smith machine keeps that perfect alignment, then I can go heel elevated, squat down straight. Like I've done those. I did those actually for the first time with Jared and Dr. Mike. That was like two years ago. And then now I've been adding them video. in. He has an explainer video on how to do those properly. Yeah. Too. I say Smith for a number of reasons, but I think for myself and also for like lifestyle average Joe clients, I think it's a great way to get in the gym and be able to challenge yourself with safety without a spotter. I was just going to say safety. If you're taller, you can also get your feet in different positions. Sometimes squatting with the barbell is difficult for people who are, have longer femurs. Or if you have an injury, a lot of people who are 40s, 50s plus will have something <laughs> going on. So I think it's a great machine to be able to use and get really good range that's appropriate for you. And even uh, the, the concern I had with holding the barbell so, so you could use the straps on the Smith machine. How are you today? I'm great. We're going to move forward to that one. When am I training with Chelsea again? Actually, Sunday. I don't know if you know who Chelsea is. All right, you go. Bulgarian split squat alternate if you're not strong enough to do them correctly. That's not a thing. You just got to make sure that your feet are in the proper position. So I'm sure we've done some... What do you do with clients who are like new, like totally new to weight training? They would still do them. I would have them hold on to something. Yeah. So 100% grab a broomstick yeah, broom or, stick, or a chair. Yeah, yeah, like have a chair right next to you. Most of the time I tell my people to do it holding on because I don't want them to waste time trying to balance. I want them to just focus on the movement. It will make you stronger for bilateral movements. So when you actually do a regular squat, it will make you stronger. Yeah. I mean, there's so many benefits to doing unilateral, so single leg movements. So I wouldn't skip them. I would get close to a wall where you can balance yourself and try to just go a little bit deeper. Yeah, every, every time you do time. it. Go really slow on the eccentric so you can see how low you can go. Don't use the chair to help you come up. It's just a guide. So like fingertips holding on. Yeah, and even if you do like three to five reps, right. just to build the strength initially, I would do that rather than say, oh, I can't do 10 or 15. I would just reduce how many reps you do and just try and get like, even if you get three good ones, good, take a break. And yeah. Try and do three more. Yeah, perfect. Right. How much sleep do you get? I don't know. I get up seven days a week around three o'clock, Monday through Friday at 3.15, Saturday and Sunday at 3.45. Never woken up past 3.45 since January 4th of 2010. It's always specific. Yeah, that's my alarm. But most days I go to bed at 8.30 sometimes at nine. So I'm basically getting about six hours sleep, but I use melatonin and a sleep product from Blackstone Labs.
abs, and when I hit the pillow, I'm out. So some people are like, oh, I need eight hours, but they might not be getting good REM sleep. I don't know how, how you feel about sleep, but I say if you get six good hours, that's good. If you can get a nap, 20, 30 minute nap, seven hours, okay. Studies that like different people operate better at different amounts of sleep. Yeah. The population of people who do better with four to six hours, there's people who do better with six to eight hours. I'm a nine hour kind of person. I know it sounds crazy. If I get good nine hours all the time, I'm your best friend. That you, you need that much sleep? Or do you feel like you don't sleep hard though? No, I mean, I, I go to sleep and I stay asleep and my body loves sleep. So you get naps or no, you just go to no. bed. So what time do you go to bed? Well, I don't say I always get nine hours, but I, I perform better when I get nine hours. So what time do you go to bed and then what time do you get up? I try by 10. And then, then what time do you get up? 11. So you um, get up at seven-ish? I get up between six and seven. Okay. Do you get more sleep during prep? Oh yeah. Okay. So will you get 10 hours of sleep a night? Towards the end of prep? Jesus On Christ. the weekends, if I can, I will just keep sleeping until I have to. Like on the weekends, if I don't have anything to do, I'll get my sleep, I'll get up, I do my work, and then I'll go back to bed and get like a two or three hour nap in the middle of the day. Yeah, question. sleep is so important for fat loss. If you are, if you- For everything. Weight gain, lean muscle tissue, speeding up your metabolism, recovery. It is sleep. I just had a conversation with someone about this two days ago. It was probably my number one thing because of the other things that are also impacted by sleep. Hormones. Right? Hormones, cravings, late yes. night snacking. There's so many other things that are impacted if you can just go to bed earlier and get proper amounts yeah. of sleep. Is three lower body days and three upper body days, is that too much? I would- Six day training split days. No matter who it is. I have guys, girls, injured people, people that are trying to put on weight, lose weight. I don't have anybody that trains six days a week. I have everybody that trains five. I don't have a single person training six days yeah. a week. And in fact, usually if I have somebody who has been training five days a week through an entire like deficit fat loss phase, and then they've completed their reverse diet, a lot of times I'll drop them to four days. Yeah. To allow them to build, have a little breather from the gym. I think psychologically it's really good. Athlete or non-athlete have those extra days and then be able to have that room to ramp up a little bit later. So no, I, I don't personally train six days a week. I don't have a single client that trains six days a week. Yeah. Totally necessary. And I would argue also if you're older, probably need more rest. Oh yeah. I literally, I don't, I have a 23 year old client and they, I wouldn't, yeah. and a guy, and I wouldn't tell him to train six yeah. days a week. Rest is important. This is a good one because of my answer. How do you get motivated to train? I don't need motivation to train. People ask me when am I competing all the time because they obviously haven't watched my I'm Retired video because I'm never getting back on stage. I never did it for the stage, so I don't need motivation because I love the process. Every day I can't wait to come into the gym. Maybe I'm not gonna beat my numbers from last week or maybe it's not about progressive overload. I just wanna be in the gym because I get to listen to music, which is like therapy for me. I get to move weight around, release happy hormones. So for me, I don't need a motivation to come here. unless. I'm training a body part that I don't like, which I needed motivation to do arms. And how I got motivated to that is I make one of my friends put me through a workout. <laughs> That's it. That's why I really try very hard to teach my clients to enjoy the process because then you need motivation to get in the gym. You need to listen to a podcast or download a new song or whatnot. I don't need any of that stuff because I love coming into the gym. So you have to find something that you love about the gym. Find something that you love about cardio. Maybe it's watching a comedy. Maybe it's listening to a podcast and you're not even thinking that you're doing cardio? I think two things. Number one, to me, it's like a job. I wouldn't say like, I don't motivate it to go into the office today while well, you go into the office because it's it's a responsibility. Right. Something that you- It's your health. Yeah, you have to do. So I don't look at exercise and training as an optional thing. But there's, and I'll, I'm a little bit different than you. There are plenty of days I don't want to come into the gym. There are plenty of days because I'm distracted, I'm tired, I'm sore, whatever. I just don't want to do it, right? So then how do you get yourself- I come anyway. That's it. It doesn't matter. So, it so doesn't there's- matter that I don't want to do. There's plenty of things I do all day long I don't want to do. So it there's nothing happen. that you do to get yourself to come in here, you just do it. Absolutely. So that's the difference between, and that's why I say I don't really yeah. believe in motivation, I just believe in discipline. Yeah. And that's you, your discipline to come in. Yeah, I mean, I'll you know, verbally say out loud, I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like, great, yeah, that's nice to hear that. I would say something that I would do in my earlier days is I do think watching videos like this, I think sometimes it's a mind state. So what can you do to shift your mind state? What are you thinking about? And if I pull up a video like our videos or any other person that I like that's in fitness see them working out a lot of times that gets my brain into that mode and it eases the blow it's like guys that will watch pumping iron mm -hmm. and then go into the gym yeah also I used to like see someone do an exercise like our clamshells that we did in the other video oh my god I can't wait to try that I, I'm ex 
excited to just go in and just do that. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't wait to go in and try it. All that's right, what I would go. say. Thoughts on longer rest periods between sets for hypertrophy. I love your videos. I don't necessarily think that you need very long rest periods unless you're a power lifter. As long as you're breathing well, then you can go into your next set. So I guess the question to them is like, why are they asking for that? Well, I think there's a lot of messaging right now that are telling people these 30, 45 second rest periods that's typically in those like fitness magazines. A lot yeah, they're not doing like total body workouts. Insufficient. Well, here's the thing. When I look at the individual, how hard are they really training? Right. Like if I'm doing a heavy set of squats, and you guys have seen our videos, I legit need two, two minutes, yeah. minutes, maybe even longer towards yeah. the end of the workout to like get my ass back off of the floor. So it's the, it's the right message, maybe to the wrong person. So to ask yourself, like, how long do you really need? If you can recover within 60 seconds, you probably should be pushing harder. I was just going to say that you probably are not pushing as hard. Like that's the reason like, why. Don't just rest just because you're like, oh, I'm supposed to rest right now. Yeah. And I always tell people, don't look at the weight that we're pushing. Look at the way we're pushing. Look at the intensity. We're just about hitting failure. Sometimes complete failure. Sometimes we maybe had two more in the time. There are a lot of people that like, okay, their set is 12 and they go to 12, but they probably could have gotten 20. Yeah. Like they don't understand about the that digs. I think it's like 60 to 7% of people are underweight, right. basically. So then they, they're taking 30 seconds and they really should be taking longer, but they didn't push hard enough during the set Yeah, to really need them. To earn the rest period. Yes. It's almost like, don't do a 12 rep set that's like not as intense and then be like, okay, well, I'm supposed to take three minutes. Purpose of the rest period is to let the body recover. But if you didn't actually tax the muscle close to failure, then you actually don't need that much recovery. Right, right. So I would say uh, context is clarity. Yeah. How hard is the person actually Training. Yeah. Somebody asked me, how much bigger do I want to get? This morning, I weighed in at 173.6 and I've been saying, I want to see what I look like at 175. But now that I'm like 1.4 pounds away from 175, I'm thinking, let's see what I look like at 180. But at the end of the day, I don't really care too much about the scale. I just, I do want to get my hamstrings. They're coming in and I'm getting stronger. My glutes, I measure. So everything is growing and I'm not touching my upper body. So one of the questions in here was, what's my split? And I have gone over that in a video, but I do four leg days, one Metcon day, which is like a metabolic conditioning day, and then two rest days, as we were talking about. But like more heavy training, and it's legs, 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 legs. So I have three legs and one upper. Okay, so you do three rest days. Huh? If I feel like I want to go in and do a little like arm touch up or something or a second shoulder day, I'll do that and it's super light. light. Yeah. But my entire series is on my YouTube channel right now of exactly what those workouts are. What okay. Look like. okay. Next question. This is just a request. When doing these videos with Jen, can you have her point to the muscle that is working? Oh, we should have read that question before we did this. Should have read that question. So let's do it on the next video. Okay. <laughs> Screenshot that one too. Right. What is the machine that you're hooked up with? They're talking about Andy. So I'm going to teach you guys what the difference is. Is, and I have a copy paste in my notes. So anytime somebody asks me, what is that? I have new fit. Okay. So it's a neurological re-education system. So it was designed for people with uh, MS. So it retrains your muscles to fire more efficiently. If you normally are doing a leg extension and you're recruiting about 40% muscle fibers with the machine on, you're in the 80s to 90s. But here's the thing. The, the difference is in a TENS unit, which people are like, oh, it's like a TENS unit. It's doing the same thing. But when you take the TENS unit off, you're done recruiting extra muscle fibers. With the newbie, it's re-educating you. So like you're gonna fire more efficiently when you're not in the system also. also. And then it was designed for that reason, for MS and all that other stuff. But then bodybuilders started looking at it like, oh, I mean, if it works like that for them, it can only help with hypertrophy. So then people, bodybuilders starting using it. And I don't use it every day. I only use it once a week, maybe twice if Andy owes me a session or if I want to get in an extra day. How many days a week do you use it? Once. We were. We started with once, we went to twice. We went to nothing. So I did my entire prep this last this year. with Because you will get very sore. Yeah. Especially the first time. Yeah. And then we went back to one day and now for the month of December, we're going to do two days a week. Okay if we can tolerate Yeah, so that's it. How often do you do barbell good mornings? Any Ever. tips or clips to share? I do not do, really do barbell good mornings. Neither do I. The way I look at it is what's going to give me the most bang for my buck. And with that movement pattern, I can't load good mornings the same way I can. I mean, it's similar as an RDL. It's 
similar as the hypers or reverse hypers. And I can load those exercises way more than I can with a good morning. So to me, I'm like, why would I pick that when I could do these other ones? I agree. I agree. A hamstring exercises with dumbbells. Oh, no. Okay, I read this wrong when I read it. Hamstring exercises with dumbbells other than RDLs. If you don't have access to a machine, you could do a prone hamstring curl with a dumbbell in between your feet. You actually are working adductors also. And then the dumbbell would touch the ground or you would do it on like a decline bench so you can get a bigger range of motion. But what did you just say? I just said Nordic curl. Oh, uh, yeah, but that's not with dumbbells. You need nothing. Uh, okay, I get it, I get it. Uh, other hamstring exercises besides RDLs with dumbbells. Well, is there any? Yeah, just laying on a bench and doing. Yeah. Okay. You have another one? Nope. I'm good. Do I ever eat cake? Somebody just asked me. No. Gluten free cake? Sugar free cake. So no for cake. all my kids' birthdays, I never have, have eaten. Do you ever have sweet? The only thing is my now Rice Krispie treats that I have as my pre-workout, but that's it. And I have not eaten a birthday cake in 23 so years. A birthday Rice Krispie cake. I would totally eat that. In July, you have time to get a good recipe. Jenny actually gave me gluten-free Rice Krispie treats that she made homemade. So maybe we can make that into a cake. I had a couple more questions, but we're gonna wrap it up. Wrap, wrap it. it up, as uh, Dave Chappelle was saying. Yeah, I hope these questions were... Mm -hmm. Informative, entertaining, educational. Suggestions were invited and will be jotted down. Yeah. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, comment below. Let us know if you have uh, any additional training questions. And I don't know, maybe we could make this like a monthly thing. We'll just I'm do totally it. Down. We need to get her in the hot tub. Hot topics in my tub where I do the QA there. That over cryotherapy or anything cool. Are we going? I don't know. I can't do it. <laughs> What I can't are your even thoughts on fasted cardio? <laughs> Go. My thoughts are I'd rather be doing fasted cardio right now. Well, then we'll do the next Q&A at my house. At the hot tub. Yes. All right. Thanks, guys.